Welcome to Previews Reviews, coming to you from Stadium Comics, located in Shoppers World Mall in beautiful Brampton, Ontario. Here are your hosts, Kevin Hickey and Ricky Lima. Hey everybody, and welcome to this episode of Previews Reviews, which takes a look at comic books coming to stores starting in October 2013. I'm Kevin Hickey. And I am Ricky Lima. Ricky, can you please tell everybody out there where this show is coming to them from? It's coming to them from Brampton, Ontario, in Stadium Sidekick location, mm -hmm. totally different, where the kick inside the, uh, the second <laughs> Shining Crown Jewel in the Infinity Gauntlet. And, uh, I don't know. I thought, see, I thought you were going to go with, like, the Chuck Norris in the 1990s kids movie Sidekicks. Maybe. October's a big month, man. We yeah. got Halloween Comic Fest. I'm so excited. There's some crazy stuff coming out. I know there's some stuff you're uh, more excited about than you normally would be. You better believe it. A couple it. things in particular. One of the things we're going to talk about. And then Whoa. one of the things you should talk about in the honorable mentions at the end. <laughs> Done. All right. Let's get it all started with Superman Wonder Woman, issue number one. All right. Beginning a bold new series that details the relationship between the Man of Steel and the Warrior Princess as rising star writer Charles Soleil is joined by fan favorite artist Tony S. Daniel to tell the tale of a romance that will shake the stars themselves to their very foundations. <laughs> I added that in. These two super beings love each other, but not everyone shares their joy. Some fear it, some test it, and some will try to kill for it. Some say love is a battlefield, but where Superman and Wonder Woman are concerned, it spells doomsday. This issue features an amazing wraparound gatefold cover that opens up to a triptych with Superman and Wonder Woman in the center. What's a triptych? A triptych is a three-part image. Oh, I thought it was like trip. Like you're tripping out? Just looking at it? You look trip. at it and you're like, I'm tripping out, man! You know, trip, dick, like what I do usually on my... Trip on my own. <laughs> right? Lady. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> what? Uh, let's talk about Charles Soleil for a little bit here. Yeah, I heard he's like Wonder Man. I hope that's how you pronounce it. I'm never sure how to pronounce these things. It's just Charles Soleil. Maybe it's Soul? Soul. Is it? Maybe it's all of the above. Yeah, all of the above. Soul. I'm, sure, I'm sure he won't mind. Uh, but yeah, he's, he, like you said... He is Superman. Oh, he's um, a comic book writer. And, uh, you know, he's not just writing one series. He's writing Red Lanterns. He's writing Swamp Thing currently. He's writing Thunderbolts from Marvel. He took over Thunderbolts. What? And uh, now he's going to be writing Superman and Wonder Woman. In addition to that, he's also a practicing lawyer that deals mostly, like, in immigration law. And he has a law office and everything in New York City. And he's a musician and has his own band, and they perform and they perform gigs on the regular. Basically, this guy is stealing all our jobs, and he's the reason why the economy is so bad. <laughs> Americans <laughs> need to eliminate the menace that's, that is Charles Soleil. That's insane. This guy has like it's nuts, right? Like the greatest jobs in the world. So he doesn't sleep, right? The, uh, when does he sleep? He can't. He can't. He's probably one of those guys that has mastered. Have you ever heard about? Those guys who claim that you can get through life by taking a series of 20-minute naps throughout the day. <laughs> he's probably one of those guys. Whoa, man. Maybe he's just, like, super driven and not, like, lazy at all. Yes. Uh, <laughs> damn it. Uh, well, getting back to Superman and Wonder Woman, they had their kiss in Justice League 12. Uh, so they've been dating for about a year now. So I think it's time for their relationship to get, like, kicked up to the next level and... Get you, know, their own book, right? you know, but most of us would just like move in <coughs> with the person or get married or something. But no, in this case, they're gonna get their own book. It's cute, so, you know. Yeah, and Tony Daniels gonna be drawing it. He's awesome at what he does. He's uh, he's great at superhero books, mm -hmm. and I really love the way that he uh, portrays Batman. This is gonna be Superman, so not as dark as a character that he's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, as he's portrayed in recent history, but. Should be yeah. good. Ricky, did you know that there'll be lots of variants for this book? And there will Obviously. also be a We Can Be Heroes blank cover for it. Of course. So it means comics. So, like, you can get 
anything sketched on it. Also from Charles Soleil uh, in October is another new ongoing series that he's starting, a creator-owned nice. series called Letter 44 from Oni Press. And let me just read you the synopsis of this, and you let me know if you're gonna if you would dig something like this. There's something up there. As newly elected President Stephen Blades reads the letter left uh, for him in the Oval Office by his predecessor, he learns a stunning secret. Seven years earlier, NASA discovered an alien construction project in the asteroid belt. A crew of heroic astronauts was sent to investigate, and they're nearing the conclusion of their epic journey. Don't miss the first chapter in this thrilling tale of real-world space travel, intrigue, and secret histories. Sounds pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, like, I don't know. I, I can't really see anything, like, really cool happening. I mean, maybe, Dude. maybe Charles Soleil's got something up his sleeve. He's got everything up his sleeve. But, but, I mean, if I was, like, an executive and someone pitched that to me, I'd be like, give me more, give me more. I, I don't got enough. Really? Yeah, no, not enough. I don't, like, I can't envision what will happen next. You know what I mean? Hmm. Like, what kind of aliens? Are they, like, evil aliens? Are they crazy well, aliens? Don't you need to read that to find out? I guess. It implies that, you know, something less than uh, peaceful happened with these aliens once, it was dis once they were discovered. That's true. So, I mean, well, put two I, and two together, right? I don't know. Maybe it's just the copyrighted fault. I don't know. Um, it's I, it's ki kind of a cool take, though, on... Have you ever heard the thing about uh, the incoming president getting three letters? Yeah. That whole that whole deal? Like, you know, open the first letter when you have your first setback. It yeah. opens the letter and it says, like, blame Ricky for all your problems. So the president goes on TV and blames Ricky and everything's okay. Everyone just puts the blame on Ricky. And the second letter, you know, he runs into another crisis. And then the second letter he opens up and it says, blame Kevin. So he goes on TV and he blames Kevin for all the problems that he's having. And, you know, the public accepts it and you know, they give him another chance. Then he gets a third setback that he has to deal with. Something, something big uh, that he has to go and refer to the third letter for. He opens the third letter and it says, prepare three letters. <laughs> Whoa, man. That's, that's yeah, deep. Intense. That's deep. So that's what that kind of reminds me of. Makes me, makes me want to read it even more. Letters. But it reminds me of the next book to come in. Remember letters? As if you would get a letter. You'd get an email, right? That's pretty much automatic email. Uh, but up next we have Damien, son of Batman number one. Damien Wayne, the son of Batman, has adopted the cape and cowl as his own. But what horrific events set this troubled hero on the path of his dark destiny? The story of Damian Wayne begins in this epic miniseries written and drawn by one of Damian's co-creators, Andy Kubert. All so, right. I'm pretty cool. I'm happy that Damian's like coming back no, in any form. No, he's not. Oh, well, in any form. Yeah. Damian is not coming back to the DC, regular DC universe. Well, not yet, anyway. But this is like, uh, you know maybe an attempt to placate some of those people like yourself that are really missing Damien. Uh, and it's more of a take on Grant Morrison's uh, Batman issue 666, which uh, supposed a future where Damien had taken over the role of Batman. So I think they're kind of revisiting that angle and saying, how did he get to that point of being Batman and taking a look at his journey from being, I guess, Robin all the way to being the Dark Knight. So it should be really cool. Um, they've said that it's one potential future for the DC Universe. So Meaning Damien was going to come back. Well, I think it's... I mean, if you read the last issue of Batman Incorporated, I think it's supposed that Damien's going to come back in some form or another. It may not be the Damien that we all became mm -hmm. familiar with, but... Hopefully he comes back, because he's literally the best. I'm just worried about Batcow through all this, and I hope... I hope Batcow has a companion. They, they should make a Batcow miniseries. They bad. should. But do you think the success of this book could lead DC to do something like... Bring yeah, Damien definitely. Back or I expedite think, his return at least? Yeah, I think Damien for a long time was kind of like just Batman sidekick. And people were like, yeah, I really like him as Batman sidekick. And I think this might be DC, like testing the waters, seeing if people like Damien on his own. Because, like, the whole the whole thing about Damien was that he was learning not to kill people right. uh, because Batman was teaching him. So, like, that, that like, relationship was like, oh, this is awesome. But now that Batman's out of the picture, well, in terms of this, yeah. we'll see if he can hold the book up himself. 
All right, yeah. So okay. if you're interested in Damien, make sure you order lots and lots of <laughs> Damien, Son of Batman, issue number one, and uh, issue numbers two, three, and four. Is there going to be, like, crazy amount of covers for that? Uh, I think there's some variants, but nothing, nothing too crazy. All right, this next one's a huge deal, Ricky. It's Sandman Overture, issue number one. Ooh. 25 years since the Sandman changed the landscape of modern comics, Neil Gaiman's legendary series is back. The Sandman Overture heralds New York Times bestselling writer Neil Gaiman's return to the art form that made him famous. I'll be abetted by artistic luminary J.H. Williams III, whose lush widescreen images provide an epic scope to the Sandman's origin story. From the birth of a galaxy to the moment that Morpheus is captured, the Sandman Overture will feature cameo appearances by fan-favorite characters such as the Corinthian, Riff Pumpkinhead, and of course, the Dream King siblings. Death, Desire, Despair, Delirium, Destruction, and Destiny. Ooh, how do you have widescreen images in a comic? Uh, it's when you do a lot of um, wide panel artwork and not like break things up into two or three panels. Okay. Or do uh, a lot of images across splash pages so basically jh williams uh style yeah which is <laughs> yeah, like, which I mean, is incredible yeah sorry. his style is incredible because he he'll he'll like he'll draw designs in uh he'll make his panels into designs and stuff yeah. and then have like a big central panel and then stuff going on yeah it's really cool on the top and the bottom and it's it's really awesome i don't know like how long it takes him to five minutes he's probably a god you think so <laughs> wow <laughs> No, I think it takes him a really long time. I, I bet you some of these Sandman issues that'll be coming out, he worked on quite a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is a huge book for many people. Um, Sandman brought a lot of people into the comics fold in the 90s. Uh, Non-traditional comic readers, lots of females, entered into the world of comics because of Sandman. And, you know, it really had a huge fan base. And when the, when the story ended, some of those people left comics along with it you yeah. know they just for whatever reason couldn't find something uh that was suitable for them in a post sandman world so sandman coming back is another opportunity for them to get back into comics yeah, totally. and hopefully they can come to talk to comic retailers like us Ladies. And, we can, and we can get them hooked up with some other stuff yeah for sure that would be really appealing even if it's just like you know fables like after after that you know yeah J. H. williams or some of the titles uh that we're going to be talking about today when we move on to the image books because there's a lot of great uh powerful female roles in comics That's coming true. up yeah um, so have you read like sandman yeah yeah Is it, you like it oh yeah yeah it's yeah. good it's good i've only read the first like volume did you like the first volume? Yeah, it was pretty good. I had to read it for school, right? Comic for school. Ah, right. Nice. I never had that privilege. So this is a prequel book. The last page is a four-page fold-out image. Is it like the poster from Superman Unchained? Because if it is, it's I hope not. Because I, you know, I, I would unfold <laughs> that, and there's no way it was getting back in the same way. Yeah. Well, I guess this is kind of like that. So. Yeah, I think it'll be a fold-out like that. Um, and. So Neil Gaiman says about this book, people have often asked me what happened to Morpheus to make it possible for him to be captured in the Sandman, number one. And now they get to find out. And finding out, they get to learn secrets of the Endless that I've kept to myself for 25 years. Family secrets. And I should warn you, one of the Endless dies on page five. Oh, man. Do you think you really kept those secrets for 25 years? No. Or you just he, made it up like... Most likely. On a flight a year ago. <laughs> and you're just like, oh, I think I'll do this. He probably like, he was like, oh yeah, this would be really cool if this happened, and then never really developed it, and now he's like, okay, well. It's it's back like, for 25 oh. years. And you're like, I'm sure you did. <laughs> Anyways, check out Sandman Overture. It's going to be a huge deal, I think. Uh, lots of variants available for it. Oh, yeah. And um, it's how you know it's going to be good, right? Because mm -hmm. of the amount of variants? Yeah. All right, up next we have Pretty Deadly number one. Kelly Sue DeConnick uh, and Emma Rios reunite to bring you an all-new ongoing series that marries the magical realism of Sandman with the western brutality of Preacher. Death's daughter rides the wind on a horse made of smoke and her face bears the skull marks of her father. Her tale of retribution is as beautifully lush as it is unflinchingly savage. All right. Whoa. I see the preview images for this? really cool, yeah. Blowing a bunny's head off and stuff. What's that all about? You gotta do that, man. But uh, this almost sounds like East of West, but like with the girl as the main character. Yeah, a little bit. Well, it's because of the whole, you know, death and the horse. Yeah. And 
the whole thing that that does, but... We should, I mean, if, if it's more coherent than East <laughs> and West, I'm okay with that. You're still not taking East and West, eh? I, I stopped reading it. So really? Yeah. It's going to get good. It is good already. I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll pick up in a trade. But we're talking about pretty deadly. <laughs> All right. It's a spaghetti western yeah. influenced story about a female assassin. Yeah. Her face looks like one of those like uh, Day of the Dead skulls mm -hmm. that you see in Mexican uh, folklore. This looks pretty yeah. awesome. One thing that bothers me is that they'll take a female like main character mm -hmm. and they're like, oh, she's pretty. Like, and then pretty deadly. <laughs> it's like, dude, like, really? I don't know. It, it seems to kind of like lessen everything. But she's all, her face is all scarred up, though. Yeah, but they're like, ah, pretty deadly. You know, she's a pretty girl. She's deadly. But are they saying that she's pretty with, with the scars so. and it stuff sounds on like her face? It, yeah. I don't know. I think you're reading a little too much into it. I don't right? know. It bothers me a little bit. Well, I th I think that what you're gonna find with this book is it's a powerful female character created by two of the uh, preeminent female creators. In comics today, and I think it's something that we should embrace. Well, I'm gonna definitely gonna instead of up. trying to like burn it in a pile of books, <laughs> like you're trying to do. What? I'm just saying, there's there's so much more they could have went with than pretty deadly. Uh, it seems like unnecessary. I don't have much more else to say about this book other than the preview pages look awesome. They do look awesome. Emma Rios is a fantastic artist. Uh, Kelly Sue and uh, Emma worked together on the Osborne miniseries a couple years back. Do you remember that? No. There was like an Osborne, Norman Osborne miniseries. They worked on that. They were a pretty good team back then. I think this book's going to be really good. Nice. Okay, up next, also from Image Comics, we have Velvet, issue number one. Ed Brubaker and Steve Efting redefined Captain America with the Winter Soldier saga, and everything they've done so far has been leading to Velvet. When the world's best secret agent is killed, Velvet Templeton, the personal assistant to the director of the agency, is drawn off her desk and back into the field for the first time for nearly 20 years, and is immediately caught in a web of mystery, murder, and high-octane action. Sexy and provocative, with a dark twist on the spy genre, this extra-length first issue by two of the industry's best-selling creators will knock you out. Whoa. Don't hey. knock me out. It's your boy, Eddie Brubbs. Yeah. Brebs, right? Yeah, Eddie Brebs. He's got that. Um, he writes a lot of, like, I'd like to see him do something else. That's that's what I would like to see. He writes a lot of, like, espionage, noir, kind of, like, spy stuff. But he does really well with that stuff. Right. But, I mean, I don't know. Let's see something else here. Want to see Brebs. him like, do some, like, Black Hole Hunter stuff? <laughs> yeah, style? maybe, like, a sci-fi book. Something. I don't know, man. Like, it's a lot of... Maybe, maybe that's just what he's comfortable with. Maybe he wants to do like a Raymond Chandler kind of thing and just be like a noir. Well, so. you know, they say you write what you know. Maybe Eddie Brubbs is like Jesus. one of the well, preeminent right. spies oh, of our generation. Man. The Brubbs. Well, what would you say about that? I, you know, I would be like, he'd be on the same level as Charlie uh, Solis. Or... <laughs> Solis. Maybe, oh, what was his name? Uh, Soleil? Yeah. Yeah, he'd be on the same level as him because like, that's like some high demanding things. Now, they're saying that this idea has been kicking around for about eight years. That Eddie, Ed Brubaker had the idea for this about eight years ago, pitched it to a few different artists. All of them, for whatever reason, weren't able to do it. Uh, pitched it to Steve Epting when they were working on Winter Soldier. And he was like, I need to do this. But I can't do it right now. So do some other things first, and then we'll get back to this. Yeah. And now they're getting back to it. So, it should be interesting to see. They've had a lot of time to work on the characters and work on the story. Um, I do want to say, like, Image is doing a really good job, as we were saying before, with uh, books and strong female leads. So this just adds to the, uh, uh, to the list of books that, that where you see that. Books like Saga, uh, Lazarus, which has been fantastic so far. Have you been reading Lazarus? Yeah. Really good. I think you'd like it. Um, and now Pretty Deadly and this. So, good times. Maybe it's the year of the female. I'm going to take this one too, Ricky, because I think you're a little too close to this project. And it is Monstrosity, the graphic novel. Boom! And the earth trembled and shook as 20 monstrous tales emerged from the depths of over 30 ferocious small press creators. Action, adventure, mayhem, 
and monsters rampage inside the pages of monstrosity. Right? Whoever wrote that, that is a really good one. When Who I read, did write that? I have no idea, but it's really good. When I, when I read that, I was like, this is this beats out literally everything else. Everything else that we've read today? That's way better. Yeah. Anyways, Ricky, monstrosity. can you tell everybody, and refresh my memory, yeah. what's monstrosity? What all is right. it all about? So, monstrosity is the brainchild of Phil McClory and Brian Evano, two super cool dudes. Awesome, in the, awesome guys. In the Toronto scene who, yeah. uh, they made their horror in the West, which we talked about last time, and they're like, we need another book, because people like this. So they made a monster-themed anthology, and they right. got a whole bunch of, like, uh, Toronto creators, some international creators yeah. together, and uh, they started making monster-themed stories. And uh, I was super jealous, and I was like, guys, can I get in on this? And they're like, I don't know, I don't know. I'm like, guys, come on. They're like, this this uh, this small-time comic store boy <laughs> wants to get in on this anthology book we're doing. Yeah. We've already got like 29 different uh, creators working on this. Yeah. I think we have room for one more. So, uh, luckily. Luckily they did. Luckily they're like, all right, we'll give you a shot. And I'm like, yeah. All right, so tell us about your story oh, in this man. book. Okay, so my story, it's about... I figure everyone's going to be writing, like, horror monsters, like, scary monsters. Right. So I kind of went the opposite way. It's about a monster who's uh, about to, like, meet up with his uh, girlfriend. So it's about him getting ready for uh, the, the meeting with his girlfriend. And he's got, like... The meeting? Yeah. And he's got, like, this little girl who lives on top of him who's, like, giving him advice and, like, trying to calm him down as he's getting ready. Uh, and what's the story called? It's called Stones on the Shore. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So, uh, and, and you worked uh, on this story with Rodrigo Bravo. Yes. Who's an amazing artist, yeah. also Toronto-based. Toronto-based, Chilean-born. <laughs> uh, he, uh, yeah, he. We didn't meet up until the the twenty four hour comic jam, yeah. where they, I asked them if I could do it, and they're like, okay. So, so we met then, and then uh, I was like, hey man, here's this really weird story, and he's like, okay, <laughs> he did it, and it turned out really it turned out really awesome. He he basically made my scripts like a hundred times better. I had the pleasure of reading your story, uh, the, you know, the completed version of it a few months back, and it was, it's awesome. Oh, I think everybody's going to love it. Um, so, go into your comic shop and ask them to order Monstrosity. It's in previews. If you're a Stadium Comics customer, come and talk to us about pre-ordering it. We'll make sure that we have some here for you. And uh, we've got a whole list of other creators that are involved in this. Crazy. Aside from you, Ricky. I, I know. I mean, on the front of the book, I know you <laughs> wanted to just say Ricky Lima. Ricky Lima's monstrosity. No, no. But let's be honest. We've got, uh, we've got some other awesome creators here. Uh, guys like Jay Bone, Fearless Fred, Shane Heron, your partner on Black Hole Hunters oh, Club. Uh, we've got Sam Agro. Jason Liu, our good friend. Marvin Law, our good friend Marvin Law, who's also co-hosted Unboxing Wednesdays with yeah. us before. And many, many more, not the least of which include Phil and uh, Brian. Yeah. And I'm so excited for this to come out, man. Once this comes out, people are going to be like, holy crap. Because like, I've read the whole thing, and I'm like, this is awesome. You've read the whole thing? A uh, majority of it. I skimmed. No, I'm joking. I didn't skim, but I, I made the trailer for it, and not all the books, all, all the stories were done. So I just got sent the ones that were done. It's true. Maybe we'll throw a link to the trailer up here, too, so right. people can check it out. All right. So Monstrosity, pick it up. It'll be worth it. All right, Ricky, you take over the reins and uh, tell right. everybody about Cryptozoic Man. Cryptozoic Man number one. You watch Stan the Man Lee pitch it on season two of AMC's TV's Comic Book Men. Now, from CBM cast members Walt Flanagan and Brian Johnson comes Cryptozoic Man. Alan Ostman, a middle-aged husband and father, sees his life quickly unravel when his daughter goes missing on a camping trip in the Pacific Northwest, Bigfoot country. After gray aliens abduct him from Roadside Bar, he learns that the fate of the world is dependent on trapping the world's most legendary cryptids, not to mention defeating a psychopath in a pig-shaped leather bondage mask. Alan knows he has his work cut out for him, the storyline revolving around this four-issue miniseries will be revisited in Comic Book Men Season 3. All right. Now, I don't think you watch Comic Book Men, do you? I saw the first season, but after that. I watch Comic Book Men because, you know, growing up as a kid, 
in the uh, in the nineties. I identified a lot with Kevin Smith and Walt Flanagan and Brian Johnson and stuff all through Kevin Smith's movies. And uh, also, you know, it's a story about a comic shop. So, of course, I'm going to watch it, right? Uh, so, they pitched this to Dynamite Entertainment last like season. On the show? On the show. It was like part of an episode. That's pretty cool. But, I mean, I'm, it was a foregone conclusion that they were going to do the book. They're right? like, oh, it's, cameras are here? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Dynamite was like, where do we <laughs> sign? Um, great publicity for Dynamite. Yeah, that's and, true. You know. Um, and... Walt and Brian are no strangers to the world of comic books. Brian's written some comics. Is he the, the guy with the beard? Yeah. Okay. Brian's written some comics. He's also directed uh, a movie called Vulgar. And he also he's also on the Tell Him Steve Dave podcast, which is, you know, at, at times very comic book focused. And Walt has illustrated uh, Kevin Smith's Batman stories, The Winding Gyre and Cacophony. So, I mean, it's not like there's a couple of guys like you and me who work at Stadium Comics oh. going to Dynamite and being like, we have this I've story idea. I've published my own books. Maybe, maybe if we bring our camera here with us. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, promise to expose Dynamite Entertainment <laughs> to our 1,000 viewers, <laughs> they'll give us a comic book deal. But uh, it was kind of cool to see the process of pitching the comic on the show, and it will be cool to see the process of them making it throughout the next season, I guess. Uh, that's going to be one of the focal points. Now, these guys are crazy. They do the Tell Them Steve Dave podcast, which I listen to. And one of the things that they're offering right now is if you get a pre-order in now for the Cryptozoic Man set, one to four, they're going to mark it with their own blood. That's pretty they're not gonna, just going to sign it. They're going like, to put their blood on it. So, nice. You ever considered doing something like that? I for, did, yeah. Uh, I was uh, For Black Hole Hunters Club, I was at a bar with a guy. Yeah. And then we were drinking, and then he was like, I just signed this with blood. And I, like, well, literally had a knife in my hand. I was about to do it. <laughs> I was literally about Did to you know this guy you were at the yeah. bar with? No, I knew this guy. Okay, I thought, <laughs> I thought you just went into some random bar, <laughs> and there was a guy there, and you, like, were talking about the comic, and he was like, sign this for you, blood. <laughs> it's like, whoa, dude. I was, I was, I was were you aware that you were meeting Satan in a bar, and that yeah. you were signing your soul over to him? <laughs> You just but, happened to have a knife? What? Do, do you have a knife on you now? It was, no, it was a bar. Like, it was like one of those, like... It was, a oh, it was like a butter knife. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> it's like, Jesus. Just took, like, a switchblade out of your pocket? Uh, I happen to have one. <laughs> yeah, man. Let I us mean, make this a blood oath. Dude, you don't even know what I do. So. I don't, I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah, you do. I don't want to know. Cryptozoic Man, coming out in October... From Dynamite and the guys from Comic Book Man. Finally, we've got Marvel Knights Spider-Man number one. From the haunted heights of a mysterious castle to the dizzying depths of the deep seas, the amazing Spider-Man has to take on not one, not six, not twelve, but ninety-nine of the Marvel Universe's deadliest villains to save the lives of countless innocents. Matt Kent and Marco Rudy bring you a defining hour in the life of the webbed wonder in a race against time and a battle against evil. Whoa, did it really have to be 99? 99. That's a little much. Is there even that many villains in the... Uh, I guess, I guess there has been. Like, do you count all the, like, the random thugs and stuff? <laughs> I guess. Uh... Um, but this book is going to be cool if you hate Doc Ock and you're longing for a return to the days of Peter Parker. Because this Spider-Man in the Marvel Knights is... Peter Parker, Ooh. not Doc Ock. Nice. So this is going to be the first Peter Parker book that we've seen in a while. This whole 99 villains thing seems to be the result of a trap set by Arcade, who's running rampant right now through the Avengers Arena books, setting up all the uh, murderous action happening in that. Uh, and it's illustrated by Toronto artist Marco Rudy, who is awesome. He did, a, he did some fill-in issues for Swamp Thing that were fantastic. He's done lots of other great work. Are we going to get him into our store? I'm working on getting him here for a signing for this issue. So he's a really cool dude, and uh, I can't wait to have him here at Stadium at some point. Marco, Rudy, here. All right, we've got some honorable mentions to go through real quick here, Ricky. First of all, yes. I want to bring attention to my homeboy, Francesco Francavilla. He has two new books coming out. One, new Black Beetle miniseries from Dark Horse, and two... What looks to be like an amazing book, it's called Phantom X Max, nice. and it's Phantom X 
all illustrated in the style of Francesco Francavilla on the front. Nice. Cover looks amazing. Isn't he doing a Guardians of the Galaxy book? I think he might be. He might be. Yeah, I think I saw that in there. That'd be pretty awesome. Yeah. He's doing everything. He's like him and Charles Soleil like team up and I don't know, solve all the world's <laughs> Take problems. Take over the world, yeah. We've also got the return of Bloodhound from uh, Dark Horse and uh, our, our friend Leonard Kirk is going to be nice. doing the illustrations for that. We've got Samurai Jack, issue number one. Samurai Jack. Samurai Jack hasn't been around for a while, but no. he's making a comeback. Yeah. And uh, it's, they were going to make a movie, but now that the guy who played the main villain is dead, uh, I don't know if they can. So maybe this will tie it up. I don't know. Yeah, no no idea right now what time period this Samurai Jack comic is based on, based in, if it's a prequel, if it's a in between or something but we'll have to find out and we've got walking dead issue 115 comes out it's the 10th anniversary comic for walking dead it will ship with 12 covers yeah a regular oh. cover Whoa. 10 connecting covers to make one giant image oh, and a blank cover that's too much so stop it's gonna be all hands on deck oh. for that watch for some stadium comics collector's packs for walking dead issue 115 yeah. uh, another book shaolin cowboy coming out jeff darrow's written in in draw yeah written <laughs> Written and illustrated by Jeff Darrow's. Jeff Darrow's is pretty much like the best comic artist. It's really good stuff. Ever. And there's one other book that's coming out. Let's, you know, just extend the honorable mentions to like a list of ten books here. Um, what is, tell me about this other Whoa, dude. indie book that uh, people might be interested in picking up. Yeah, let's see if I can write a copy right now. Rising from the depths of the ocean. Deep Sea number two, pretty much. Deep Sea two? Deep Sea two. Uh, me and David Bishop have been working extra hard ever since the first one came out which was a year ago last this, october when yeah. this one's released it's yeah. pretty much the one year exactly. anniversary of the first yeah. one so that came out and we're like holy crap this is crazy let's do another one david's like i got a stranger to finish in this other book of stone and i'm like that's cool dude that's cool you do you you do your thing i wrote it gave it to him now he's working on it it's crazy so go like the facebook page facebook.com slash deep sea ogn deep sea ogn all one word yeah all right. And uh, check that out. And yeah, in October, second one's going to come out. And it's a two-parter. There's going to be two books that come out. Two books at the same time? No. One's coming out later. Next October? No. Okay. May, hopefully. All right, cool. See what you're doing there. <laughs> Planning them all around free comic book days. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, all right, everybody. That is it for this episode. Thanks for checking out the comics coming out in October 2013. And join us next time when we take a look at Collectibles coming out starting in October 2013. Take care.